On this episode of the iGauntlet, the world's toughest towing test, we're gonna do something I think you wouldn't expect. We're gonna tow 10,000 pounds with a luxury truck. Right, Mr. Truck? Right, Andre! Wait. Hi. Oh, hi. Look at this. Yo. It's a reunion, but also, uh, what do you think about this Tundra? Well, it's pretty. Yes. And it's a big model change from, what, 15 years ago? So I notice <laughs> it's different. But, so there's a lot to know, learn about. Learn how well it does the Ike, how fast it does compared to a non-hybrid Tundra. There's a lot we got to look into here. All right, so we're going to take this brand new truck, the Toyota Tundra Capstone Luxury Edition. We're going to hook up 10,000 pounds to it and take it on the Ike. Super Ike! This is the first for Toyota because they have not had a capstone luxury edition of the Tundra until now. And basically, I would call it the Lexus of pickup trucks because you should see inside of it. We'll show it to you later. But it's a twin turbocharged hybrid powertrain with lots of torque and power, and it's capable of towing over 10,000 pounds. Mr. Truck, I'm so happy we're doing this again. Well, yeah, I almost forgot how we did this. It's been a long time. I know? gauntlet, but this there is a are. super Ike because we're maxing out this brand new Tundra hybrid. They call it iForce Max. That's the only way to do it. I, I love yes. that, you know, doing the Max gauntlet because that's that's what really proves. You know, people say, well, we don't pull that much weight. Well, that's okay, but at some point, somebody will. You need to know whether or not the truck will stand up to it. Yeah, we're going to be doing the downhill portion the same way we always did ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. And through the yeah. years, is we're counting brake applications. We're also going to compare how this truck, this hybrid Tundra, does against the uh, the non-hybrid one, the regular one. To test the new Tundra, of course, we've got the stand standalone iron bowl, which we use all the time, and it is an 18-footer with a dovetail. And we're also, of course, we're using the Gen Y hitch, just an adjustable hitch, and the spring arms. We've got the weight distributing because that's really the best way to do this. And the, actually, Andre did a good job of loading this cat on here. He's got it so the weight's about balanced on it. You don't want it too far to the back, you don't want it too far to the front, so we can control the tongue weight on this. So Andre did a good job. So, we're gonna go from 60 miles an hour to 50. And this is my first brake application, Mr. Truck. Okay, there's one. Well, you're really breaking hard. Now, does a regen braking on, does this have regen braking? Yeah, it does, it does. So that should and, help you. Yes, and also it has something that the Ford F-150 hybrid does not have. It kind of gives me an indicator about how full my battery is. Oh. So it says it's half full right now. And, whoa, it downshifted, look at this. That's good, it's 10 speed, should do something. That's pretty high RPM. There, Ooh. look at that, it shifted up now. Well, now I have to brake again, because uh, it's 61 miles an hour. Yeah. So there it goes. Wow, those are pretty tough brakes. You must be really breaking the heck out of them. So two brakes applications. Two. Got them. Two. So here's the benchmark. Uh, the regular Tundra, although it was towing fewer, less weight, right? Yeah, 90, what, 8,100 pounds? Right. And okay. we're towing 10,000 today. Okay. That had six brake applications. Yes, that's right. So if it's around 10 brake applications, I would call it a success. If it's way more than 10, 12 or something, I would say it's not maybe as great as it could be. What would well, you say? Well, not to differ, I would call 10 average. I wouldn't call it great. Okay. I would call six great, but you know, and, and I know 2,000 pounds makes a big difference, and I don't know if this cat has more drag than whatever we had on back then. Uh, it was uh, one of those, our old F100, remember that old truck? Oh yeah, so yeah. that's, that had a little bit of undercurrent. This here, the wind can't go under, it has to go over and around it. That okay, nice? that's 10 now, right? We're at 10? Yes. Holy cow! But we're almost done, Mr. Truck, I look know, at this. I know, The eight mile stretch of I Gauntlet World Stuff is towing test is almost done. Uh -huh. We're at 10 brake applications, correct? Well, that's awesome, that's awesome. Okay. How's your, how's your seat? My seat, oh. my, my thighs may not be as big as yours, but 
Well, well I have good. kind of longish legs. That's right, you do. You're a long my, tall. My, dude. I'm kind of a freak. So you don't. It just long drives don't work for you. Even with the seat up to give you a little more support. I actually, I actually got the bottom cushion to come up a little bit. Yeah. Look, it's holding. It's holding. It's holding. Come on, hold it a little bit more. I'm no, just, another one. I thought you had a lot of wishful thinking going on there. But <laughs> That's and 11. You, and you're braking pretty hard. I don't remember braking that hard. But um, you do well, whatever you so want to do. it's my style for this truck because I, I've learned, I've had this for a few days towing. And I've noticed uh, in order to get the grade shifting to work, yeah, I need to be a little bit more aggressive on the brake. That's, well, that's what I'm learning. Yeah, that seems to be a lot of trucks are that way. Yeah. And, yeah, and then it probably helps your regenerative braking, right? By braking well, harder. I don't know. I don't know that. Energy back to the battery. So actually, what's supposed to happen is, is because when I brake, I'm also using trailer brakes, and that's not quite helping my electricity. But yeah, that's because true. my trailer brakes that's are also true. helping me to slow down. So here we go. We're done with the downhill portion. That was 11 brake applications. Yep. I gotta say, stability was wonderful. Yeah. Didn't you? Would you so say? You, yeah, you like the the coil springs on the back now. Yeah, I do. It's, it's, it's a multi-link. Yeah, and yep. what does? Uh, I didn't even look to see. It's, I thought the trailer was a little at an angle, but the truck's not looking like it's squatting. Well, it's got a secret. Well, it's got progressive well, springs, right? Let me show underneath. Yeah. Let me show you. So for this new generation of the Tundra, Toyota actually redesigned the frame and the rear suspension completely. So this is what I wanted to show you, Mr. Truck. You see, uh, this has the fancy AVS AVS suspension system. It's got an air spring in the back, height adjustable, and also a multi-link system. Look at the materials, first of all. The wood, the leather, the way it's combined together. Look at the dashboard. Do you think this is a Lexus or could be a Lexus? Well, it could be. I like the, the console really well. That's nice, got compartments in it. Real wood, man, this, this is, it's top of the line. And wireless charger. But here's what we were talking about, about the suspension, right? So this has this, these two buttons. Uh, normally, um, it's an automatic mode. So it's self-leveling, we could show that outside. But if you hit this, manual, then you can manually lower by holding it or raise by holding it. It takes a while. Oh yeah, it's a two, I didn't know it was a two button operation. I thought yeah. it was just one or the other. Isn't that interesting? I love the air suspension on this. It's a five link. It really gives a, a smooth ride. We're going to try it out on the night and just see exactly how smooth it is in some of the rougher parts. But this is so cool. All trucks should have them. Semis have had them for 60 years. Air cab, air axle, air everything, air seat. All trucks should have rear air on them, not just Toyota and Ram, but I really like this one. I think it's really going to improve the ride. I think you're going to love trailering. You should always be able to keep your trailer hitch level, and this will do it without you having to adjust your hitch 100 times. All right. We are starting the uphill of the Ike Gauntlet. Yes, the tough one. The Super Ike. Yeah, it's Super Ike, not the easy one going downhill. So it's always 35 miles an hour and then I'm gonna floor it. Ready? I'm ready. And now. Which button? You didn't show me which button. Oh, you got it. All right, do you see my gauges? So it's using both electricity and turbos and it's accelerating and 60 right there. That's pretty fast. I have a couple of gripes uh, with this Tundra. First of all, every time I shot the truck off and on, look at this. It defaults to normal mode. So every time I have to put it in tow haul mode, and because we're towing heavy, switch it to tow plus. But I did not disconnect the trailer. So why is it defaulting to normal mode every time? So I don't like that part of it. I love that they added the gauges. So the temperature gauges, including the transmission gauge on this right side, but they're not numeric. They're just kind of rough estimates. Uh, I would have loved to see numeric values so I can kind of tell and judge how hot my transmission is. Well, let's take a look at this. They call iForce Max hybrid engine. It's a little dusty, I apologize for that. But 
it's really powerful and torquey, right? Well, look at those giant cables. I like that little blue they put on everything. Even the grill has that blue on the Toyota label. Yeah, they, that's what they so do cool. for, they, they do that for all of their hybrids, right? Yeah, that, that's, you got to identify things. That's marketing, that's good. So here are the numbers. 437 horsepower, which is more than the Ford hybrid, right? Yeah. And also class leading torque for, at least for half tons, 583 pound feet. I'm glad they had one thing that was best in its class. One thing. <laughs> Out of 15 years of waiting for it. Yeah, but you're right. You can see a lot of big orange cables, some here and some behind the engine. That's the high voltage system okay. uh, for the hybrid. And it has 1.87 kilowatt hour battery that's underneath the rear seat. Right. Right. And of course, a 10 speed automatic. So, this is what the uh, Mike Spears, the chief engineer of the uh, Toyota trucks, have told me. Yeah. He said that they're using the electric motor to kind of fill in the gaps of the gasoline internal combustion motor, right? Okay, well, that makes um, sense. And that does make sense, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That should really help on an uphill battle like this because you're not losing any RPMs between gears. Yeah. It keeps and, it constant. And what this particular Tundra hybrid has, in my opinion, because it also has a 10-speed automatic, but I think it's the smoothest hybrid on the market right now. Really? Uh, I own an F-150 hybrid, Yeah. as you know, and once in a while, once in a blue moon, maybe a couple times a year, I can get it to kind of shudder sometimes, you know, when it's transferring between like electric motor and gas. Yeah, yeah. This one never does, or it seems never to do that. This is the world's toughest towing test, of course, because we're of elevation. It's a um, 7% uh, percent grade, right. the steepest allowable on an interstate. Uh, we're going to over 11,000 feet of elevation. And eight minutes would be a perfect benchmark. Sure, right? sure. And we got low traffic today for Friday. It's unusual. It is unusual. And also, there's a little bit of construction here. So yeah. we're down to two lanes. Now, remember what this highway looks like. Nice and smooth as a baby's butt. Then wait until <laughs> February. <laughs> <laughs> or April. Or April. Where it's going to be tore up again. It will be just pothole city. Oh, look, it downshifted. So the other things we're going to compare, of course, are fuel efficiency on the way up and also time. You know, how um, much time we, um, we're going to be using on the way up. Right. And also we can test how quiet or loud the cabin is. Yeah, and that should be a, it. Should be a really good test. It should be quiet when it's not wrapping up four thousand RPM. Like well, do you want to do you want to try to uh, find out? It, yeah, four thousand. Sure. So uh, let me uh, be quiet for a little while so you can turn it on. Sixty-eight point one. And that's at four thousand RPM. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Yeah, in the previous test where we tested the new twin turbo Tundra, right? Um, it was the quietest truck ever that we ever. Um, tested on this mountain just a normal, about, truck? a normal truck with, with a trailer yeah. uh, but it wasn't ramming as high because we weren't towing as heavy I think okay well that would have made sense made 8,100 8, pounds yeah and this is way 10, heavier 000, yeah um, look uh, I have all my towing gauges on the right so I have my turbo boost I have got my hybrid assist I've got my oil temperature and I've got my transmission temperature and you're probably watching the gauges on video as we're driving uh, right now, the oil temperature is creeping up a little bit, but it's still not within a dangerous limit. What's the boost? Boost has been about at 15 psi, so we're using a lot of well, that's, a lot yeah, of turbo. That's pretty high. Well, that's good. You know, this <laughs> being a Tundra turbo for this new year, that is it's interesting. Is they like twins? It's got two turbos. It's got two air cleaners. It's got two two intercoolers or whatever they're called, yes. water to air. Yeah. So they like to have two air. That's a lot of plumbing they got underneath the hood of this thing. But I think they wanted to focus it on working hard, right? Towing trailers. Right. And yeah. maybe it'll help cooling. Maybe it'll help a lot of things. Yeah. Because they have the really popular truck, the Toyota Tacoma, right? Yeah. Um, which is does really well for them. But that's more of a lifestyle truck for them. That's right, true. camping, doing stuff like that. Yeah. But the, the, the Tundra for them is really their working vehicle. Of course, it can go off road as well, but sure. it's their towing machine. And by the way, uh, there, there are a lot of questions about this. That does the new Tundra have a transmission cooler? 
transmission fluid cooler. Yes, it and, does. And it does. It's yes. not as big as maybe some of the others in the yeah, past. Yeah, it right? is pretty small. Yeah, it's tucked into the corner. Yeah, they but it does have one. There. Yeah, they tuck it away and you've got to look for it. So I would say I am pleased. Yes, the engine um, is at about 4,000 RPM. That's where it likes to be right now. But all the temperatures, including the coolant temp, oil pressure, oil temperature, transmission temperature, they're still within check. Right. And it's a really comfortable ride. Still. It is. It is. It's very nice. I'm sure it's handling well. It is. You know, the rear suspension I'm, is working like it's supposed to. Now, tell me this. Yeah. Was... Uh, because it's running 4,000 RPM half the time we're running it, yeah. does that also in, increase the battery charge? Does that change it's, by RPM on how much it's, it's charging battery? It, it might. I think it always, like you can see the battery status down there, it always tries to keep it at least half charged. So okay. you have that available to you to help. Sure, sure. Uh, to help accelerate and yeah. all this. That's stuff. why hybrids rule and all electric ones suck. I mean, that's why hybrids For through. towing, right? For towing. Specifically. That's why, that's why trains have been hybrids for 70 years. Diesel generator, electric All right, motor. are you ready? I'm ready. We're gonna stop it. And bam. Do you wanna show them the time? 7.58. Sure. Yep, 7.58, so it's all right there. And also 3.4, now changed to 3.5 MPG. So we did use quite a bit of fuel. Yeah, the other one did 4.3 miles per gallon. Exactly, yeah. Mr. Truck, I gotta say, I am really surprised. Usually when you have a luxury truck, like an F-150 Limited, or a Ram Limited, or the High Country GM, you lose a little bit of capability, right? The tow ratings That's, go down. Yes. The payloads come down. But this truck did great. I mean, 11 brake applications, not the best. That's not the best. But the uphill performance was very strong. Oh, I thought it was a great truck. I mean, I really enjoy what they've done to it. But, you know, you figure all the different things with it, and it's such a smooth ride with that rear air. I love the rear air. I haven't, I guess I've driven one of the coil, but you can't beat air and it levels you out. It's perfect for the trailering people. And now you got a six and a half foot bed option. And you also still have the big window in the back for journalists. You can get your cameras out there and do your job. Right. But no, well, what do you powerful. think about the interior, the style, the comfort, the technology? What do you think about that? I like the interior. This has the wood trim on it. The console is super awesome. 14 inch screen. My goodness, you can watch movies in this thing. <laughs> But it, it, I do like that, and I, I think I was very comfortable in there. The seat was fine for me, but you know, it's a, it's a towing machine, a luxury towing machine, and you know, all that stuff does add weight to it. Yeah. And it's still a 10 speed, but you know, it was so smooth. We, when we go up the hill, we didn't hear anything shift. We didn't feel it shift. It's actually got a little bit worse fuel mileage than the one without the hybrid. Right. Pulling a trailer, but it was towing right. heavier. Exactly, yeah. towing 2,000 pounds heavier almost. So you saw it here first. A luxury truck can tow your skid steer cross country if you wanted to, but I have some bad news. It's the price. We have to talk about price. 77,000 is the price on this truck. And this is basically all in. Basically every feature that you can add to a Tundra, this has. The only thing I don't like about it, and it's just a numbers thing, is you pay all the money for the hybrid and you gain just a little bit of power. You don't gain fuel mileage, you can't charge your house. Yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed with that too, because it has a 400 watt system for power export, but Ford has, Ford has 7.2 kilowatt. Yeah, you can, you can power a house. <laughs> exactly, so let us know what you think in the comments below, and as always, go back to where? Store.mrtruck.com. Remember, buy all your Gen Y hitches and all those other cool things. And alttfl.com for everything automotive, one-stop shop right there. Thanks.